Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Study Guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today, we'll solve some problem that you will find on page number 748. Please turn to it. Page 748. Always make sure the book is in front of you so that you can follow the work. And if at the end of the video you find this helpful and you decide that you would like to work with me, you can always get hold of me. Send me an email if you're looking for a one-to-one -one tutor, one-to-one uh, -one tutoring, online tutoring. Send me an email at kishwaniprep at icloud.com. Alright? Number 35. In number 35, we are given an equation, a quadratic equation, and a straight line, 4 minus x. And we are simply being asked to find, to find the values of x, or well, actually one of the values, because there are two possible solutions, obviously, because it's second power, uh, that will satisfy these two equations. So let's find it. Let's set them equal to each other and let's see what we can do. Y is equal to this thing and there they tell you. So let's set them equal to each other, 4 minus x. And just solve for it. Simple enough. Let's bring the x to this side. So we're going to get x squared minus 4x and a plus x. So it's going to give us negative 3x. And oh, 4 is going to drop out. Oh, this is very simple actually. And that's equal to 0. So take out x common. It's x minus 3 is equal to 0. There you go. So that means either, either x is equal to 0 or x is x minus 3 is equal to 0 which means x is equal to positive 3. Which one of these two is the correct answer? The answer is they are both correct. You can grid in either one of them. They will accept either one. Number 36. Number 36. Let's see what it has to say. Number 36 has to do with geometry problem. We are given a triangle, ABC. Let me put it on the blackboard so it's easier for us to do the work. And it looks something like this. It's a right angle triangle, A, B, C. And within this triangle, we have another triangle. So we have A, B, C, D, and E. And that is also a right angle triangle. Before we do any work at all, let's first understand what it is that uh, that is being tested here, what it is that they want, they, they want to make sure that you understand here. The concept that we're dealing with here is what is known as similar triangles. As long as they have three angles that are exactly the same, if, they have, if you have two different triangles and all three angles in one triangle equal, are the exact same equal, equal degrees as the three angles in the other triangle, they are similar triangles. Here, as you can see, this is 90 degrees and that is 90 degrees. So they are the same. This angle here, angle B, is sheared. It's angle B is sheared by triangle DBE. And angle B is sheared, it also occurs in ABC. So they, they, they share this angle. What about these two angles? Well, these two angles are also equal because these lines, line DE and AC, are parallel. And how do you know they are parallel? Because they, they are both sitting at 90 degrees. If they're both sitting in 90 degrees, they're parallel. If, the two, if you have two parallel lines, and if you have another line intersecting it, then this angle, of course, would have to equal that angle, which is what we're dealing with here. So this angle equals that angle, this angle is 90, that's 90, and that angle is shear, which means the three angles in this triangle, the top triangle, DBE, are the exact same degrees as the, as the, as the triangle ABC. They are similar triangles. Now we can begin our journey. Now we can begin our journey. We are told that the tangent of B tangent of triangle B is equal to 3 over 4. 3 over 4. We are told that BC BC is equal to 15. We are told that DA is equal to 4. And the question is, how much is the length of DE? Let's see what we can do. Let's start with this thing. Tangent of B. If B is right there. B is right there, which means opposite opposite of B is side AC 
and then opposite over adjacent which is BA, AB. That tells us that the ratio of the side AC to AB is 3 to 4. Well, if it's 3 to 4, if the side AC, AC, let's just, let's just pretend that it is in fact 3. We don't know if it's 3. The ratio is 3 to 4. But this is 3 and this is, and this is 4. If they are in the ratio of 3 to 4, and we are further told, we are further told that BC, B to C, B to C is 15. So 15 is, it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle, 3, 4, 5. That's a 5 here, except the 5 is 5 times 3. That tells us that this, this side that we're looking at, A to C, is not actually 3, it is 3 times 3. Similarly, this side A to B is not actually 4, it is 4 times 3. So far so good, you with me? Now we can make progress. Then we are told that DA, D to A, D to A, this part right here, D to A, this part right here, we are told, is 4. Okay, stay with me the story. If that from A to D is 4, and we just established that A to B is 12, that means that D to B must be 8. D to B must be 8. It's getting pretty crowded. I understand that. It's 8. You understand? And because they are proportional, because they are similar triangle, if this, if A to B is 12 and this is 8, it is two-thirds of AB, which means this side, this side here has to be two-thirds of that side. This is 6, uh, this is 9, two-thirds of 9 is 6. There you go. Of course, it's 3, 4, 5 triangle. 3, 4, 5. There you go. Even though, even though nobody is asking us to find the length of BE, and they, did, they did not ask us for the length of BE, but that's what it is. It's a 3, 4, 5 triangle, except here, it's a multiple of 2. 3 times 2, 4 times 2, 5 times 2. That's a 3, 4 triangle, this is a 3, 4 triangle. The only difference is that this is 3 times. Uh, think of this as a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Put, think of this as 3, draw a 3, 4, 5 triangle. 3 inches, 4 inches, 5 inches, right angle triangle. And put in the Xerox machine. And in this case, you're magnifying it 3 times. And this one, this case, you're magnifying it 2 times. So this is enlarged 100%, this is enlarged 200%. That's all. They're looking for size of size of DE and that's 4. Uh, that, that's 6 rather, not 4. That was 36. In 37 and 38 they are related. They are, they're, 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 here's what we have here. And we have a table here. We have a day. One two, three, three days, and here are the, we have five points, four points, three points, two point, one point, and zero point, and we have scores that people have scored in different days here. Day number, oh, for example, on day number five, on day, num oh, 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 on day number one, on day number one, we had two people who scored five points. On day number two, we had two people who scored five points, and then three people who scored Day number three, on day three, we had three people who scored five points, and so on and so forth. So here we have three, four, six, two, and three. We're not going to worry about, we're not going to worry about right now day two and day three, because the first question that is being asked deals with only day one. So let's just take care of that. The question simply is, what's the mean score? What's the mean score? on day one. How much is it? Mean score. So let's find out, shall we? If you were to add them up, these are, these are different people. Again, one more time. On day number one, there were two people who scored five points. There were three people who scored four points. There were four people who scored three points, six people who scored two points, two people who scored one point, and there were three people who managed to score a big fat zero. So if you add them up, six plus, six plus four is ten, 2 plus 3 is 5, 2 plus 3 is 5, 5, 5 and 5 is 10 and 10. We have 20 people all together. There are 20 people all together. Let's see what we can do. So how do you find, so here, what, when they say find the mean score on day 1, here what we're dealing, the concept that we're dealing is what is known as weighted average. So let's do the weighted average. So there were two people who scored 5 points, so all together they scored 10 points. There were three people who scored 4 points. Then we have another 12, then we have another 12, then we have 2, and then we have a 0. There we go. We add them all up, 
we add up add them all up that's the total that's the total number of points that were scored by 20 people and that's the average let's add them up very quickly shall we 12 plus 12 plus 12 is 36 because 12 times 3 is 36 36 46 46 plus 2 is 48 so it is 48 it is 48 over 20 let's divide top and bottom by let's divide top and bottom by 2 if we divide top and bottom by 2 we end up with 10 at the bottom this becomes 2 and this becomes 4 so we end up with 24 24 over 10 which makes it very simple it's just 2.4 the question was what's the, what's the mean score on day 1 the answer is the mean score is 2.4 let's do the next one shall, shall we? the last one last one just give me one second for the last one For the next question, we do need some information on day two and day three. So let me first put the information up before I put the problem up on the blackboard. So we had on day number one, on day number one we had two people who scored five points. On day number two we had two people again who scored five points, and on day number three we had three people who scored five points. All right. So here's the question. The question is, what are the odds? What are the odds of picking a person at random who scored five on either day one or other day two? Or day three, given that, given that he scored five points on at least one of these. three days. It's a mouthful. It's a mouthful. This part, this, this is called conditional probability. This part that we just wrote down, that's the condition. This, we have to fulfill this condition. Given that, we cannot just pick any people, at, we cannot pick any person at random out of 20 people. There are 20 people who are playing the games here on, on three days there. There were 20 people playing the games and we have to pick one person at random, but we cannot just pick any old person we have to meet a certain condition. It's a conditional probability. And the condition that we have to fulfill is that this person that, that we're going to pick at random has to have scored five points on at least one of these five, three, three days. In other words, in other words, we cannot pick that person because that person only scored four points. Do you understand? And they go on to tell us later on that nobody scored, uh, that, that you can read the details. What we're dealing with here are the people who scored only five points. And the people who scored only five points are these people. That's it. That's the condition here. So let me first write it to how it is written here. This is how we write it. Okay, again, I'm, uh, I will have to write a little bit lower. This is how we write it. The probability, what are the odds, what are the odds of picking a person in, in the language of mathematics, this is how I write it. The probability of picking, picking a five, picking someone who scored a five on day two, or day three, five on day three given that he scored five on at least one day and that part, the condition part, the conditional part, that condition we just wrote down that's what limits us to this part. We, uh, we don't have to go anymore. There are only seven possible candidates. There are only seven possible candidates who scored five points. And out of those seven people, we're going to pick one person at random. And the question is, if I were to pick one person at random out of the seven, how many, what are the odds that the person that I picked scored, scored five on either two, or day two or day three? Well, on day two or day three, on day two we had two such people and on day three we had five such pe three such people so we have a total of five people 
who scored five points on either day two or day three out of a total of seven. There you go. All of that hassle and all of that work is for this punchline. But we cannot have this payoff, we cannot understand that unless we understand the problem. And that's how it is most of the time with the nature of the probability problems. Probability problems, a lot of the times, they're very simple and they're very quick, is what I meant to say. They're very quick, they go like that, if you understand what is being asked. Do you understand? What are the odds that if I were to pick 1% at random, that that person has scored 5 points on either day 2 or day 3, given the fact that he scored 5 points on at least one of these days? In other words, forget everybody else. Just deal, just look at your potential, the pool, your pool of potential candidates are the people who scored 5 points. That's your pool. It's not the 20 people. It's not out of 20, it's out of these 7. So the answer for this question is 5 7. And that was the end of that page. That was the end of that exam. And that's the end of this video. I'll see you tomorrow and we'll start a new exam. The next exam, obviously. In the meantime, if you wish to get hold of me, just send me an email at keshwaniprev at iCloud.com. Alright? Bye now.